too far to look back. You know, that's something that we all really need to realize. There ain't nothing to go back to. I've got everything to live for God for and nothing not to. This morning we're going to be in James 3, starting with verse 13. I think I told Karen wrong. I think I told her 15 this morning, but it's going to be 13. But this morning I had that song, that last song that they sung on my heart so heavy. Because another song that comes to mind is I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. I got to make it to heaven somehow. <laughs> you say, Mike, why do you think of songs so much? Because songs mean a lot to me. I love the old southern gospel songs. I, I love the old hymns. I love praise and worship. But, you know, it just, there's something about a lot of them songs as I read scriptures. I, I just get to thinking about a lot of the old songs because they were written with meaning <coughs> that has a lot to do with life. And uh, life is a beautiful thing. But you can make it dark or light kind of our choice, you know, how we choose to live our lives. But we're going to be in James chapter 3 this morning. I'm going to start with verse 13. And uh, I don't know if I can get that up on the screen or not, but uh, praise God. If you got your Bibles, just follow along. Amen. Yeah, there, there's a new system back there by the way Caleb come and set it up uh, we had a system that was really slow and he come and kind of hooked us up a very quick system so uh, I told uh, Bob I said we could uh, uh, send him a bill if it don't work this morning so uh, that would be a good joke I guess but uh, Praise God, it is good to be in the Lord's house, and I'm going to go ahead with the scripture this morning and not tarry. Amen. Just listen to what I read this morning. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if it hath Bitter envyings and strifes in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. For the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them who make peace. Let us pray. Father. I just pray that you help us just preach for a little while this morning. Lord God, give us words to speak that are anointed. Father, that every ear that hears your word this morning, Father, can place it in our hearts, God, and we can use it, Lord, as the word of God becomes essential to our living. Lord God, I just pray right now for a supernatural anointing this morning. Lord, to just open our ears that we can hear what the Word has to say to the church. And Father, to prepare us for this world. Because Lord, we have much to be prepared for. Lord, as we see the day is at hand, Lord, where night cometh. <laughs> but Lord, we know that we're not in the dark, but we're in the light. Because Father, You are the light and the Father of all light. Lord, just help us this morning. 
Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Now the scripture starts off here with a question to the church. And as we look to this question this morning, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Who? This, this is referring this morning to the teacher of God's Word. The true Word. Not just a Word that we take as fly by night. It seems to me that some people love to skip through the Scriptures without taking the whole Word. They love to leave parts that are critical to the flesh out of the Word today instead of preaching the Word of God as it comes. I believe this morning that we in the latter day that we live in, as we see the world turning to such turmoil and so much sin, that we need to be awakened to the truth of God's Word. We need not be uh, sleeping at the wheel, let's say. <clears throat> but he says, who is the wise man? and endued with knowledge among you. Now, we know that knowledge is understanding of truth, okay? Wisdom is understanding of God's truth. But you have to have knowledge to be able to interpret the Word of God with that until we get, get wisdom, and then we have understanding, not just interpretation of God's law and God's Word. So many times it seems like, uh, you know, as we think about referring to the true teachers of God's Word, the Word goes on to say, let him show out of a good conversation. Number one, when we speak and we know God's Word, our conversation, our teaching, our preaching, our evangelizing needs to be centered upon the Word of God and not our own personal ideas. But by the way, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of thought. I have a, a lot of things I would like to say sometimes, but I understand that everything that I want to say is not in the Scripture. Okay? I want every one of you to understand that. Just because you feel like you want to say something, if it goes contrary to the Scripture, we need to hold our mouths still and not be preaching or teaching or evangelizing unless we know it is of the Word of God. That's where knowledge comes in, okay? We have to use self-control. I have a lot of personal convictions. But you know what? I've learned I can't preach by convictions. <laughs> Amen? They're for me. You don't ought to share your convictions all the time. with You, know, you can share your conviction, but don't... Preach it as if it's the Word of God. Use wisdom. Everything we talk about, everything we preach about, if we want the wisdom of God to be expressed, amen, we have to do it with His works, with meekness of wisdom. Meekness. Now, there's two ways to express yourself in the Scripture, and the Bible talks about that in the book of Jude. The Bible says that some preach with love and some preach with fire. Okay? Some will skin you alive. <laughs> some will love you to pieces. Now, neither message is wrong because the Scripture, uh, it, it, it speaks that that's okay. That's how the two types of messages are preached. Now, some people say, I'm a little too hot. I burn too much with fire. Well, praise God. That's the message I've got from God. But also, I want to have meekness and love uh, tempered into that message of hope. It can't be, we can't be dooming and glooming people all the time. Sometimes we have to be encouraging people when they're struggling in life, when they're going through battles and temptations. Praise God, we can't come against them with fire. We have to come against them. Come to them in love and compassion. Amen. Meekness of peace. Amen. 
And it says, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, in other words, if you're bitter when you break the word, now this is talking to the teachers and preachers this morning, and I, 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 I look at the church as we're all part of that ministry. We all teach, we all preach, we all evangelize, if nothing else, in your lifestyle that you lead. But you know what? I'll tell you one of the hardest things it is to understand is the world don't act like the church does. You ought not expect them to be acting like the church does. Because until they get the light of Christ in their life and begin to awaken to the selflessness and the sinfulness of their lives and their, their, their desire to please their self other than to please God, we have to understand we too were there one time. Amen? We too were selfish. We, we wanted things our way. It says, but if you have bitter and envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. <laughs> now this is talking about the sin nature, amen, that springs to life in, in, in those that sometimes are trying to preach and evangelize. It's all about self. <laughs> it's all about their will, not God's will. Church, we don't have the right to preach anything other than God's Word. Now, many times I used to wrestle with God about this. I thought, God, why don't people get it? <laughs> why aren't people opening their eyes up? And God let me know. He just called me to preach the Word. It's up to every one of us to live it. I can't make you live the Word of God. All I can do is offer you what God wants you to live. And then by choice, we have to take up the reins of God and place it in our hearts. But don't let us be preaching with envies and strifes in your heart. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Well, I hear so many people today. They claim to be evangelists and ministers and all this, but they lie against the truth of the Word. Many think that God has changed His mind concerning sin. No. God's yea and amen is still the same. Amen. What God called sin in the Old Testament is still sin today. Amen. What the Word of God calls sin in my life is sin in your life. Amen. What God calls sin in your life is sin in my life. We need to understand that sin is still sin. And if we want to get into heaven, we have to live a selfless, sinless life. You say, but Brother Mike, I can't live without sin. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, if you do sin, what do we do? We have an advocate with the Father who's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. It doesn't say if you sin, it says when you sin. What do we do? <laughs> we confess our sins. You say, Brother Mike, I don't like to confess my sins. Well, I want to say something to you right now. Confessing to me doesn't set you free. Confessing to God. <laughs> Amen. That's where you get set free. That's where you can walk in the righteousness of God. <coughs> I made a statement last week, I think it was. Now, if you sin against me or a brother or sister, you lie about them or you tell an untruth about them because it's handy at the moment to excuse your own self-righteousness, you have to go to them and them alone and ask them for forgiveness. And then you go to God. Because you know what? The Bible says if you have aught with your brother, when you bring your offering to the altar, it says just leave it there and go back and amen, make Make a restitution to that brother or sister, or God won't even receive anything you have to give Him. Remember that. We need to wake up as the church and realizing with bitterness and strife, we cannot please God. People say, well, uh, I have bitterness towards so-and-so. I tell you what, if you've got bitterness in your heart against a brother or sister in the church, you need to make a reconciliation. Now, this is not talking about to the world. This is talking about to the church. Amen. You say, but Brother Mike, how does the church have all against each other? 
because believe it or not, people get on your nerves sometimes. Huh? That's right. Believe it or not, we're not all the same. We don't all have the same disposition. We don't all have the same likes or dislikes. And sometimes people allow those differences, amen, to get them caught up in the things of the flesh rather than the things of God. I can honestly say, honestly tell you this morning, I have, have no problem with anybody here. Amen. I love every one of you. Amen. If you got a problem with me, it's up to you to repent. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. If you got odd against me and what I've said, you need to come to me and let's talk about it. Amen. You know, one of the biggest evils in the church is when people in the church take their complaints outside the church to the world. You wonder why the world won't come to the church? Come on, I think y'all picking up on this. It's because the church is so busy complaining about itself. Who else would want to be involved in this mess? Amen? But I thank God for a spirit of peace. I thank God for a spirit of love. Amen? Some people, when they disagree with you, they won't even talk to you about the situation. They just put their tail between their legs and run. That's the wrong spirit, church. That's not the spirit that we should have in the house of God. Amen? It's okay to debate the word. But when we get the answer and we know the answer and it still doesn't please us, what do we need to do? We need to repent to God. Amen? Not to each other, but to God. We need to repent to God because His Word offends us. Why does God's Word offend the church? It's because the church would rather stay in darkness than in God's light. Now, I'm saying church, quote, unquote. Okay? <laughs> Not all that say they're of the Lord are of the Lord. <laughs> we need to understand them. Amen? It says, this wisdom descends not from above. In other words, this wisdom claims salvation or victory, and it has nothing to do with salvation or victory. This wisdom is of flesh. This lying spirit, this Satan, lies not against the truth. Amen. It says, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above. This is a warning that the Lord is speaking to the church. Amen. Don't change God's plan. There are many people, many churches, many denominations today that have rewrote God's plan for salvation. Amen. They've rewrote confession of sin. They've rewrote what sin really is today because they want to justify every sort of ungodliness and impureness, amen, that the world has to be involved in what the church has. Church, we can't do that, amen. You're either righteous or you're unrighteous. You're either saved or you're lost. You've either got sin in your life or you have sin that has been forgiven, amen. It's a choice that we make as the body of Christ, either walk in the world or walk in God. What do we choose? You know, the Scripture tells us, choose you this day whom you shall serve. Amen. You're going to serve self or are you going to serve God? Are you going to blame pleasure, the pleasure to men and justify their sin? Or are we going to call sin, sin and say we have to come out from among the world? We can't be of the world and expect to get into heaven. Brother, my, uh, Brother Bob, two weeks ago, I'll tell you what, last week it was, he preached an awesome message to the church. Amen. And I said this to him. I'll say this to the church. Best message I ever heard him preach. Amen. Because he called sin, sin. Amen. Not too long ago, he preached in James, the third chapter, the first part of this chapter, about the tongue being an unruly instrument. Amen. That was an awesome message, too. I told Lisa, I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to preach that all over again or just the last part. But I figure you all remembered the whole thing. But this tongue is what gets the church in trouble. Amen. Now, I've heard you, 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 you ride a horse, you have a bit in his mouth, right? Wherever you turn his head, that's the direction he goes. Now, they don't say a mule because that ain't so with a mule. 
Okay, believe you me, I've been there, tried that, done that. It didn't work. <laughs> Amen. We had an old mule that was like some people in the church. Amen. He was like some people in the church. Amen. When he got tired, amen, and he made his mind up, he was an old white mule. He was as big as a horse. He was huge. But he was ornery as ornery can be. He's kicked me so many times it wasn't funny. Amen. He kicked me one time and I was trying to pass him on a mare I had. And he kicked and hit my watch and literally spun my watch on my wrist. I thought, Lord, that's too close. <laughs> you know, that's pretty close. But everybody kept saying, well, whenever he gets ready to go home, he'll just go home. I said, he won't with me on his back. <laughs> yeah. Not with me on his back, he won't go home. Well, we knew when it was about time for him to want to go home, so that I took over. <laughs> I took over. Yeah. I got on his back, and all of a sudden, he just started turning around. Well, I laid into his bed. I had his knee pulled all the, his head all the way back to my knee, and the bit was pulled plumb out of his mouth sideways. Guess where he went? He went home. Amen. I just knew that if I was on his back, I would take him where I wanted to take him. But I got a thought out of that, see? I got a thought about that mule's just like half the church. Okay? Okay? When, when it gets ready and time for them to do what they want to do, they'll do it if they want to or or you don't want to or not, right? So we need to remember, <laughs> all right, wisdom comes from above. And I'll give you a little wisdom. Don't buy a mule. Okay? Now, if you're arguing with somebody in the church or debating and <laughs> you know their spirit is the spirit of a mule, don't argue with that person. Don't debate with that person. Because even though you're right, you're going to lose. You say, Brother Mike, how could you say that? Well, I've tried to debate with a few people God's Word. Amen. I had a sister and I worked with one time. Well, I, she is now, but she wasn't in. And I was trying to witness to her about the Lord and uh, we was in the stock room, and I was talking about Jesus, and this guy walks in, and first words out of his mouth, well, I'm a deacon. I'd worked with this dude for years and didn't even know he claimed to be a Christian. Okay? And the lady in the stock room, she looks at him, and she goes, if you're saved, my dog's saved. That was the exact words out of her mouth. If you're saved, my dog's saved. And she was speaking truth. But he got offended. So what come out of his mouth? It wasn't, I bless you, young lady. It was blankety, blank, blankety, blank, 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 okay? That's what come out of his mouth. And she goes, see, I said so. You know? She knew his heart. His heart was not the heart of God he didn't have, as it starts off in verse 15, this wisdom descends. Okay, it says, he, what he had was, this wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Okay? My mom used to sing a song to us when we were little kids. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. <laughs> Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Then we go on, be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little hands what you touch. See, there's many things that we, as a Christian, as a believer, as a confessing light to the world, we have to use self-control. It says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. 
See, if it's not of the cross, if it's not of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, if it's not of holiness, we should refrain from speaking it. Okay, y'all can say amen, because if you don't agree, just say, uh-uh, okay? And then I'll preach to you more next Sunday, okay? But wisdom is, wisdom that is from above is first pure, pure. True wisdom is pure. In other words, it's holy, it's, it's complete, it's complete. Doesn't leave gaps in our life. Amen. If you don't have godly wisdom, you have darkness. You say, Brother Mike, how do I get godly witness? Through and by the Holy Spirit. Okay, no other way. No other way can our life be fulfilled unless we be filled with the Spirit. That's why I tell the church there's much more than just salvation. Amen. There's a deeper walk with God. We need to have a deeper walk with God. So we walk not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Now we can all go through life faking it, hoping to make it. But it won't get you anywhere. Nowhere. There's no true peace. There's no true joy. There's no true understanding of God's Word. Because we don't have wisdom that is above. Amen? It's pure wisdom that we seek after. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. Good fruits. You mean i got to be a producer of fruits? Yeah, what is fruits? <laughs> Amen. It's, it, it's speaking about your fullness in God. The first thing, as Bob mentioned last week, is love. Right? Without love, we don't have the fullness of the joy of the Spirit. Amen. We don't have peace. Uh, that passes all understanding. We don't have uh, uh, the fulfillment of what God wants us to be living in because we got to be full of the fruits without partiality and without hypocrisies. <laughs> in other words, I can't love one and not another. We have to love everybody. Okay? Now, I found out when you preach the Word, you have to love people enough to tell them the truth. Right? If I knew if I knew you was getting ready to step into a house that's on fire, and I thought, oh, he'll figure out it's on fire when he gets in there. What kind of person would I be? If you seen a young child getting ready to walk off the cliff, would you just watch it and see how far it fell? Or would you try to reach out and grab that child and pull it back in so it could have a life? Without brokenness. Church, it's our duty to one another to call sin, sin, and righteousness, righteousness. It says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them who make peace. So, now as I read that, I got to thinking about the story in the Bible about the sowers. Some sowed. In rocky soil. Some sowed their seeds in the brambles, right? Some, some sowed their seed on earth that wasn't tilled. What did they get? Not much or nothing. But if we work the soil, the soil becomes pliable. And then you fertilize it with God's Word. And then you sow the seed of righteousness. People are more likely to partake, amen, of that fruit. And the seed will take root, amen, and begin to grow and blossom into a beautiful child of God. What we in the body of Christ need to be doing, amen, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them who make peace. Make peace. We choose peace. Not everything is peaceable in life, but we should choose peace over wrath. I want to read a first a few verses here in the next chapter, if I may. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? 
that war in your members? In other words, this is talking about the individual, not members of people. This is talking about members of our bodily functions, amen? We're having war with Him because we're struggling, amen, against the cross and not with the cross. I mean, you know, people do this. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not become. You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Now how should we pray? Should we do it all on our own? How many people do you know that are trying to go through life on their own? Amen. Look what I have acquired. Look what I have done. <laughs> Look what I have made. Look what I have built. Look what I have done. It's all about me, 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 me. That's a problem in a relationship with God. <laughs> because God, when He's warring against your spirit of pride and your spirit of self-doing, indulgence, <laughs> amen, you need to understand the reason that we struggle so much in areas of our life is because we don't ask God for what we have need of. You know, that should be the beginning of our prayers. Father God, quicken me. Give me understanding. Give me joy. Give me peace. Father God, teach me to do the things that I don't know to do. Father God, show me Your way, not my way. Lord, I don't want to know the ways of others. I want to know the ways of truth. I want to walk in Your truth, Father, not in my own understanding. Because if we would come to that place in our life and the relationship that we have with God, amen, we would begin, amen, to do the things God's way. And verse 3 says, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. How many of y'all ever prayed a prayer but you didn't really believe it would happen? That's what this is talking about. You said, oh God, save my family if you can. Huh? Lord God, be with my spouse, be with my children, be with my, my brothers, my sisters, my mother, my father. Lord God, touch them if you can. Why do we ask if we believe that God cannot do? Amen. It says, because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust, you adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Whatsoever therefore will be a friend, it says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We can't be a friend to God and a friend to the world. There has to be a separation. Does not mean we don't show ourselves friendly to the world. We try to lead them to the truth of the gospel. But when we see they don't heed the call of God, you know what? There has to be a separation. We have to cut ourselves off from them because the Word of God challenges us in this manner. We can't be a friend of the world. It's an enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture says, in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us lusts to envy? You think God's saying this in vain? Because I want to tell you something this morning, and most of you know this. We're in constant battle against the flesh. Okay? The flesh desires envy, strife, contention. The Spirit says, peace, peace, peace. That is a battle that every believer goes through. We was talking a little bit in Sunday school this morning about when Jesus was tempted. We didn't go into the temptations that He had. Hopefully that's the next week's lesson. 
but I don't know that it will be. But I want you to understand, every temptation that you face, Christ has already been there. Every temptation that the enemy brings against you, he brings it against the flesh because he knows he can't war against the Spirit. Because the Spirit is of God and not of the flesh. That's why I want to challenge every one of us this morning. Walk in the Spirit and not after the flesh. Amen. You hear me this morning? Let us walk in the Spirit. The fullness of the Spirit. It was mentioned here this morning. How did we get there? Through prayer and fasting. Through reading God's Word. Through listening to God. He says, be still and know that I am God. Amen? Sometimes we've got to be still and know that God is God. Amen? The Spirit who dwells in us lusts to envy, but He gives more grace. Amen? Wherefore He said, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Can we humble ourselves before God this morning? Amen. Are you willing to humble yourself before God? You say, Brother Mike, I, I, I'm shy. I, I don't want to humble myself before God. I might embarrass myself. You know, I've come to a point in life, I don't mind to embarrass myself for the sake of the kingdom. Amen. Whatsoever God tells you to do this morning, do it. Do it unto the Lord. Be willing to humble yourself before God. Would you all stand with us this morning? Let us pray together. Father God, Lord, I ask this morning, God, as we humble ourselves in Your presence, Lord, that You'll speak to our hearts, each one individually. Lord, where we fall short, <laughs> Lord, You're there. You're there to pick us back up. Lord, you place our feet on that holy rock. <laughs> the rock is Jesus. And Father God, I just ask this morning, Lord, if this word speaks to anyone on Facebook or YouTube, God, that they too will surrender their heart, mind, and soul to you. Lord, recognizing we can't play church no more. Father, we're here to worship in spirit and in truth. Father, we refuse to listen to the lies of those that have a message of compromise. Father, we refuse to follow after the, the panting and the desires of Satan wanting us to fall back to our own ways. Oh God, we check up your ways. We walk in your will. Not my will, but thine be done. Father, let that be our prayer this morning. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.